Another month down, another crop of brand new iOS and Android games. Today at Game Ranks, we bring you the best new iOS and Android games of July 2016. Just as a quick disclaimer, we always split these into two videos. The best new free games will come soon. These are games that are up for purchase. Number 10, Day of the Tentacle Remastered, which is one of the classic point-and-click adventure games. It is one of the games that defines the genre. If you remember back in the day to the LucasArts point-and-click games, or if you really like games that use the adventure game format and want to see where it came from, or just really want to experience one of the best examples of it, you have no other choice than to purchase Day of the Tentacle. The game was actually remastered by the original devs who went on to start Double Fine Productions, including Tim Schafer, and it's available for $4.99. Highly recommend this one. Number 9, All Is Lost is an atmospheric platformer in a distant future where mankind is very separated. It's very different for a platformer in that it's not going for a cutesy look at all, but at the same time it's not devoid of color like Limbo per se. The environments are very pretty despite being very industrial and has a unique feel. All Is Lost is a very pretty game, it's 99 cents great game. Number eight is Clocky, which kind of reminds me of a Rubik's Cube and kind of reminds me of Connect Puzzles. You have a bunch of different lines on a cube and your object is to connect them all. The main thing I would have to tell you about this game is it's a bit short because it's very innovative and takes the concept of a minimalist puzzle game definitely to a new place that I really appreciate. It would have been nice if it was a little bit longer, but at the same time it's a really relaxing and enjoyable puzzle game that for a dollar it's really hard to be like, yeah, I got ripped off because I did enjoy it a lot. Number seven, Dead Venture is perhaps the most colorful zombie game other than Plants vs. Zombies. It's a vehicular combat game which really plays a lot like Blast Core from Nintendo 64 if you remember that from many, many years ago, particularly on some of the escort areas of the game. There are guns though, so it's a little bit more involved than you might expect. It's not just driving, and it's also not just a time waster. This is one of those mobile games that you play and you go, yes, this is what I want from a mobile game. And at the same time, if it were a little bit more fleshed out and released on console or Steam, it would also be great. At 99 cents on iOS and free on Android, I'd actually like to see a lot more like this. Number six, Neo Turf Masters, which is one goofy game. I don't know if you remember the arcade classic from Neo Geo. The gameplay is kind of fast, kind of arcadey, which by the way adapts wonderful to the touch controls, and plays with a distinctly weird Japanese competition aesthetic. It's super fun, it's got local turn-based multiplayer, so you can literally do exactly as you did in the arcade. Neo Turf Masters is $2.99. And assuming anyone else has made an arcade golf game, it probably doesn't live up to this one. Number five, Severed, which is probably the best example of an iOS game. Like this is the concept of a smartphone game taken to the extreme. Has beautiful, colorful graphics, a very distinct style, which by the way comes courtesy of the studio that made Guacamelee, which is a great game. But what really makes this game good is its depth. Like, it's very easy to compare it to Fruit Ninja in some ways, but even though I like Fruit Ninja, I almost feel bad comparing it to that. Severed's on iOS, and it's $5.99, and I know that's a bit of a steep price when you've heard the words Fruit Ninja, but believe me, it's worth it. Number four, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, which is identical to the PSP version except for some big improvements. The most noticeable of which is obviously the graphics. They do look better on a mobile phone than a handheld game console from a while back, but they actually managed to make the controls better, and I don't know that everyone would agree with me when I say that, but it's perhaps one of the best touch control conversions that I've ever seen. Now this game was previously out on iOS, but has been gone from the App Store for a while, so we're kind of counting it as a re-release, and it's such a great version of the game, we felt like it was really worth bringing it up. Now it does have a steep price at $14.99, but that's significantly less than what it cost on the PSP, and frankly, it's just better on iOS. Number three, Guild of Dungeoneering is a really great name for this RPG dungeon crawler that has such a unique sort of sketch art style that the little splashes of color in the game really, really feel cool. It's a great game to look at, very unique, but it also has a great combat system. It's turn-based and uses card mechanics in not an astounding, non-traditional way or anything. The control scheme is neat because you sort of build the dungeon around the hero. It's just enough of a different take that it's very 
very fresh, but it's not so foreign that it's going to require you to completely relearn the genre. It's $3.99, it's definitely worth it, it's got a lot of depth without sacrificing the addictive mobile gameplay. Number two, Out There Chronicles is the sequel to 2014's Out There, which was a text adventure, and fundamentally that hasn't really changed per se, but it's now a text adventure that's on top of a bunch of gorgeous hand-drawn art. It's extremely well written and provides you sort of a blank slate ball of clay type character to mold to your will. There's going to be more episodes, the story is not done, so I can't tell you whether the ending is satisfying or not, or how many endings there are, or indeed anything of that nature but I can say what's there is very well written and engaging and the art is gorgeous. It's $2.99, you can get it on iOS and Android. And finally, number one Battlefleet Gothic Leviathan. There's not a lot of turn-based strategy games on iOS and Android and there's a good reason, it's not an easy genre to create a touch control scheme for on a small screen. Battlefleet Gothic Leviathan unapologetically says, you know what? Fine. The controls are very good on it, and they do exactly what they should do. And the game brings you a depth that you really don't see in iOS and Android games, period. But it also does a very good job at not giving you a lot of lulls. It's $5.99, so it's not super cheap, but it's definitely worth your time. Especially if you're a fan of the genre, it's pretty much the shining example of that on iOS and Android. Couple of bonus games for you, there's Crypt of the Necrodancer Pocket Edition, which can only be described as a roguelike rhythm game combination, which is a weird combo of genres, but it actually works really well. Borderlands 2, which is the full Borderlands 2, except for on Android. It's hard to resist Borderlands, great games. Star Nomad 2, which is an open world sandbox game that takes place in space. There's battles, there's economies. It's that kind of a game, and it's great. Quell Zen, which is a puzzle game. It's very easy to pick up, but difficult to master. How many times have I said that before? It's still fun. And finally, Dead Man Diaries, which is essentially a choose-your-own-adventure interactive fiction, which has a pretty unique point of view. What's your favorite iOS or Android game from July? Let's so meet in the comments and hear from you there. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. And we will see you next time right here on GameRanks.